My name is Mo Amir, and this is Van Color, British Columbia's bona fide culture and politics TV talk show right here on Check and Check Plus. We're also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Tonight, we're going to talk about a super fun topic, municipal politics in British Columbia. Please do not change the channel. 2022 is a municipal election year. It's super important, and my featured guest tonight promises to get you excited about it. He is one of the most delightful voices in the province's mediascape. Hailing from Victoria, he boasts an impressive resume, boosted by his incredible charts, fun tournament-style voting brackets, and informative ranking lists of everything from Metro Vancouver craft breweries to Heritage Minutes. I deeply admire this man. He is the municipal affairs reporter for CBC Vancouver, covering local political stories throughout BC. He is Justin McElroy. Justin, so nice to see you. Nice to see you again, too, Mo. Well, virtually, but it's good to be here. <laughs> virtually is still better than nothing. I appreciate it. Justin, let's just get into it. Municipal elections in BC are happening this year on October 15th. Now, this level of government always seems to have low engagement compared to provincial or federal politics. And this is particularly evidenced by low voter, voter turnout. In 2018, the city of Victoria had a voter turnout of 45%, Saanich had 38%, Surrey had 33%, and Vancouver had 39%. So sell me on this, Justin. Why should we care about municipal elections? I mean, why should you care about what house goes up next to you? Why should you care about what your parks look like? Why should you care about what your streets are paved and where they're going in the future? You know, it's the front door stuff of uh, politics. And it might not be on the front page of your paper or on social media. I'm dating myself with that paper reference. <laughs> but it's the stuff that truly, do it does matter, right? And it's the, going to impact you directly a lot more than nationally national federal politics and a lot of times more than provincial but this is important stuff and because of uh, the fact that there's no majority or minority depending uh, impacting when the election is going to happen it's every four years at the same time who you choose now you're stuck with you've got one shot it can be confusing because a lot of times there's not parties you have a ballot that's way too long yeah. but uh, it's the one choice you have the one opportunity you have and so if you choose everyone can choose not to vote but if you don't and you want to complain the other four years that happen afterwards i just sort of uh, you know shrug and go Ugh, it was right there I feel like a lot of people do that, but it, it does seem like one of the key issues where municipalities do exert a lot of influence is housing through zoning, permitting, and of course, property taxes. I feel like housing was really the core issue in most urban areas in BC during the 2018 municipal elections. Has this always been the case when it comes to municipal elections, or is this like a fairly new phenomenon outside of like... Uh, you know, would have been referendums on bike lanes in Vancouver. Yeah, and, and it is fairly new as the biggest political point and a point of political division. And the reason for that is pretty straightforward. People could afford homes in the past pretty <laughs> easily. Uh, now they can't. And because municipalities control how land is used, there's so many more debates now about what is the appropriate policy in terms of zoning, in terms of permitting, in terms of what cities can do both to escape what the city looks like. That's always been there. But what they can do to ensure that people can stay in the communities they like, can grow their families to the places that they like, and whether these desires but heads with other demands that longtime residents have. So, you know, we used to say that the one big political dividing line was for left and right was your basic conservatism on taxes, on mm -hmm. what a municipality could or should do or try and lobby the provincial and federal government. Now there's two ends of it. That's still there, but a big one is that how much do you want to develop? Do you want to let a rip and have as uh, many homes as possible, be dense, have more apartments, do everything in your toolkit to try and increase that supply? Or do you go, you know what, that's extremely risky, that mm -hmm. can uh, upzoning, can inflate property values, so we need to be more cautious we want to keep things closer to the way they are, and we think that other levels of government have more responsibility and more tools to lower the price of housing. Now, are there any other core issues that municipalities will share in B.C. heading into October's vote? 
Uh, I think a big one is going to be these questions about uh, crime, about uh, homelessness, about how for some people they can be intertwined. You know, th this is an issue that does ebb and flow in the province, but we're certainly seeing in Vancouver, we're seeing in Victoria, but we're also seeing in a lot of other mid-sized municipalities, Prince George, Penticton, Kelowna, lots of places where there's more of an argument of people saying, look, what we're doing on a local level to try and house the most vulnerable is not working. And so th the question is whether, A, whether people will vote on this or not, whether it influences they were going to vote for person A, but instead uh, person B has a better platform and we're going to try that. And then the other question is simply to what extent do, do people get passionate outside of this core group to go and vote when perhaps they didn't before. But I think housing will still be the dominant one because at the end of the day, it's affecting all British Columbia so much. What role will COVID-19 play in this election? We've seen Vancouver Mayor Kennedy Stewart really tout the city of Vancouver's high vaccination rates in his political messaging. But realistically, what can incumbent mayors or councils say that they did to provide COVID-19 support? You sound a little skeptical of that moat. Did, did the mayor? Did the mayor? It, did the mayor personally go to people's houses and give them that job? I'm not, you know, to. But yeah, I I think the what how COVID will dominate a lot of the discussion. I think is this sort of hypothetical that you hear from a lot of politicians when they go, "Why didn't you work on this? Or what about this issue? Or can we do that?" And what ends up happening a lot is they will say things like, "Well, we were making progress on that, but then the pandemic happened and that stopped what we were doing, and now we're making progress in yada yada." So I do think that will dominate some of it is as to whether municipalities did enough over these last two years to advance other interests, or whether voters say, you know what, you should have at least tried to do X, Y, and Z over that time. But it's going to be difficult to say because we don't know what the pandemic is going to look like in October. Now, cities often complain about senior levels of government downloading responsibilities onto municipalities. From your vantage point, what sorts of things are municipalities more responsible for now than they were like 20 years ago? Yeah, and it's every municipality takes a different approach on what they choose to be more responsible for because other levels of government simply either do not fund things the same way that they did before. So an example is for that might would be affordable housing, you know, federal and provincial governments put lots of money into non-market housing throughout the 60s, 70s and 80s and basically dried up in the 90s and 0s and for most of the 10s. And that's a lot of the issues that we're dealing with now. Uh, and then if you're a bigger city with enough of a tax base to maybe fund things, you go, this is something that I'm going to do. So so that's the big one. Another one is just a question of what government should be lobbying for. You know, uh, a more traditionalist viewpoint of local government is that we should keep the streets clean, we should have the parks green, we should uh, clean up the potholes, and we should do some nice events once in a while, but otherwise we should get out of the way. And mm. uh, But there are a lot of politicians, and a lot of them are younger, a lot of them, you know, you would say traditionally are on the left side of the political spectrum, that say there's a climate crisis, and local mm. and provincial governments and federal governments aren't dealing with it. There's an affordable housing crisis, and provincial and federal governments aren't dealing with it. There's uh, an opioid crisis, and again, provincial and federal governments aren't dealing with it or aren't moving fast enough and we have some powers and we're going to try and do what we can to make things better. Now we get lots of arguments both on council tables and in city politics and discussion over whether that's quote unquote responsible or not. But I think if you're someone that has a more traditionalist viewpoint, you have to really argue to, to voters, look, these are the reasons why we need to stick to these certain things and not deviate off course. Uh, and you have to back it up with data and you have to back it up with showing what maybe other levels of government are doing and what the cost of a munis municipality trying to do that above and beyond their traditional uh, stuff. Otherwise, you can end up sounding like a stick in the mud, right? Uh, yeah. And just saying sort of weakly going, no, we can't, when <laughs> lots of voters might get excited about those ideas. So it's an interesting conflict that plays itself out throughout the year. But again, elections are the only time where we can actually see what voters think. And it's really fascinating, right? Yeah. Well, hey, Justin, sit tight. 
We have to break to pay the bills here, but uh, we still have a lot more to discuss. Folks, stick around because after some business, CBC Vancouver's Justin McElroy will still be here to discuss what exactly is going on in Victoria, Surrey, and Vancouver. I'm Mo Amir. This is Van Cullen.